Hi, it's your favourite Yorks demo here. This is Suzanne at hullabaloo.com and today's project is this one. So this is a large lidded box um, which you will open here using the ribbon and I've decorated it with some of our free hostess paper that you can earn on a qualifying order. So this is the first year that Stampin' Up! have included designer series paper as part of a reward. Um, so you can only purchase this paper through a qualifying order. You cannot get it any other way. So I'll quickly show you a quick section of that paper. But then we will go on to make this box. So if I open the ribbon here, um, it opens it completely. You can take the ribbon out if you want to. And then you will take the lid and the base apart. Um, oh. I say that, I can't get out of it, it's that wide, there we go. And it is, as you can see, it's a very wide lidded box. So the finished dimensions of the box base are five and a quarter by about eight and three quarters. So very big, large enough to include heaps of treats, maybe a scarf that you're gifting somebody um, and so on. I'm not gonna retie this bow properly I'm just gonna quickly tie that off there just so that I don't lose the ribbon from it there we go that will do um, and then we're using this is my new favorite stamp set I cannot stop using it if you visit my blog every day you will see that throughout June and July there were at least three different projects just with these little turtles on so we will be using that set too which is called turtle friends and i'll show you that in a moment so we'll get started by making the base first i'll quickly show you those papers so this is a pack of paper called pattern party as you can see i've cut into quite a few of my sheets already but as you'll see there is a colored side and a monochrome side of every paper. Now just quickly scooch through so you can see what we've got. You can also see <laughs> I've used a fair bit. I love it. I love the paper. So lots of flowers, hearts, stripes, spots, patterns, hound's tooth. It is absolutely gorgeous and you get so much of it. In fact, if I turn it on its side, I have used a lot of this and that is still the pile I have left. You get 48 12 by 12 sheets. Who else can say you get that free? Ask me if you're not sure how to get that. But anyway, we'll we'll skip back to the box. The box. We need two sheets of what is international a4 so these are 11 and three quarters by eight and a quarter on this one we used evening evergreen but today we're using soft succulent and you need to score both these sheets in exactly the same way so i'll grab my scoreboard and the first sheet you want to put it up to the left and up to the top fully and we need to score this at um, one and a half on all four sides. Like so. There we go. That's the base done. That's the easy part. We'll then bring in the second one. And you want to put this to the top and then I'll bring this up closely so you can see you want to move this out literally a tiny bit did you see that so I'll do that again move it out ever so slightly and then do the same score so move it out slightly score at one and a half rotate put it up move it out ever so slightly one and a half and you do that the same on all four sides. But move out slightly, 
one and a half. And that is the two pieces that we need. So before I burnish these, I thought I'd skip to the decoration part. So the top of the box, we're going to do exactly the same, just in the differing colours. So we've got a background base here, and this starts life like this. And then all I've done is blended it using um, a soft succulent ink pad, which we've got here, and blending brush. So I have got my blending brushes here. I'm also going to bring in um, my smaller stamp. Uh, this is for the Stamparatus grid paper, but I like using it when I'm being messy. So blending brush in the ink. I take off the first bit of excessor there and then I just blend in until I get the right consistency of colour. Which is what I want like that. It does take a little while, but it allows you to get, I can, well almost, you can go ombre if you wanted and go darker to the edges and lighter to the inner. Whereas I just, I just cover it all and it lands how it lands. You see that's taking shape nicely. Do the same on this side. And the good thing about the blending brushes is if you think a piece of it needs more attention, you can just go back in and do so. Now these blending brushes are amazing. You just need to give them a bit of a clean after or even just rub off. As you can see, I've got other colours on this one because this is one that I just use for anything and everything. But you can of course dedicate them to um this could be my greens only brush for example um you can clean them afterwards fully so that you get all the excess out but the nice just to have on hand ready right i think this is the last bit i need to do just trying to even some of it up There we go. So we'll pop this to one side. We will need that again. Put the brush away. So that will be one part of the top of our of our box. So I'll just pop that to one side. Um, so bad me. Should have given you the measurement there. This first piece of DSP is eight and a half inches by five. The centimetre measurements will be over on my blog. I am not an amazing whiz kid with the measurements and I'm still learning them. So I will include them into the description bar below. Um, if you click onto my blog, everything is over there. If you are watching this on my blog, the measurements are just below the video. Um, so yes, eight and a half by five. We're then taking a second piece and keeping this in its black and white form. And this is seven by four. And what we're going to do with these two is we're going to pop one into the centre of the other and we're going to have them like that. Then I have got a piece of basic white which is going to go in the centre here and this is two and a quarter by five and three quarters but I want to link uh, this into the into the brief a little bit and I'm just going to put a bit of that green ink along the bottom because when we stamp and cut out our turtles we want them to look like they're stood on something and this gives them a, an impression of at least being in some grass so there we go it's only ever so slight but enough that it'll stand out against that background like so so we've got those pieces ready I'm going to just get rid of that and now i've got some scrap white I'm going to bring in my Evening Evergreen ink as well as the soft succulent that we had before. And then I'm going to grab 
um, what's this, a D block, and I'm going to grab my Turtle Friends stamp set. So this is photopolymer, so you can see straight through it. And what you can do is you've got wording and shell patterns that you can line up if you want to, or you can have the turtle as outline only. So this is 17 stamps in the photopolymer set. And what I'm going to use, the large turtle, there's two little teeny tiny turtles that are facing different directions. So these two here, I'm going to use their corresponding shells. Then I'm going to use their hat and I'm going to use the You Are Totally Loved. You are totally loved. You've got to say it like, is he called Squirt on Nemo? Either way, you've got to say it like you're a bit of a cool dude like he does so i'm going to pop the shell up there a moment because i've only got one small block and i want to get my turtle stamped first so one little turtle beautiful how cute are they and then the other little turtle oh I love them. It doesn't matter how many times I stamp using these. I never get ama any more amazed each time. I love them. I love, love, love them. Okay, so I'm going to stamp the shells in a different green. So this is the soft succulent. And then I'm going to try and do this without getting my head in the camera. There's one. And she do the other one as in the same way. There's two. Okay, so we'll pop that off to one side. Um, get a block for the shell and a block for the big turtle. And then again, in the same way, big turtle is going to get stamped down. And his shell in soft succulent. And again, Try not to get my head in the camera. There we go. Oh, he looks amazing. And then I want his little hat. So I'm just going to pop this onto another block and get that stamped down here. Oh, that wasn't quite good, was it? Let's do that again. Much better. Um, and then as a final stamp, we've got the sentiment. You are totally loved. I'm going to see if I can fit that right at the top there. Could I do that? No, I'm gonna. I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to pop it on here. There we go. Okay, so we can pop the ink away now. We're all good and we can start to cut our turtles out and construct the box. So we'll start down here first. I'm going to use my snips when I can see where I've put them. We'll separate the little ones and then we'll separate the hat. And there's my snips. Um, so Big Turtle has a punch. That, um fits around him so i've got his punch here so a turtle punch um can you see that there yep, we can um this does the big turtle and his eyes but i don't need his eyes today because i've gone with more of a, a cartoon approach and we're just going to pop that in here get that lined up nicely Like so. Is that all good? Yep. We'll quickly pop him to one side before I lose him. There we go. Pop that punch away. Um, and then these I'm going to fussy cut because there isn't a punch for these. So I'm just going to quickly cut around the hat and its little bobble like so and then just 
Fluffy cut that little bottom bit so that we can fit it onto his little head. There we go. And then I am going to just quickly blend some colour onto that, which is what I did with the other one as well. There we go. And that's just so it stands off the page when we pop it on there. And then we're going to cut these two little guys. So quick run round. You don't have to be too accurate. You just want to leave a little bit of a border as you go around so that it resembles the same as the punched image. Like so. There we go. Oh, I mean, how cute is he? His little face, he just looks so excited. So gorgeous. So we're going to finish this one and then we'll go on to the second little guy and then we will be ready to bring the whole box together. Like so. So yes, you will see me make two different cards with these same little turtles. Um, and one of them I was inspired by a TV series I used to watch as a child. So you'll have to keep your eyes out for that. See if you can have any guesses ahead of that blog post coming out as to what they may be. Yes, they. This one looks like he's fallen asleep. Taking that long to cut around him, he's, he's nodded off. Okay, so whilst I'm here finishing this off, it's worth noting that this month, if you are not too much of a crafter in terms of stamping and making your own projects, you can now explore the kits collection, which has just launched in June. Those kits um, have anything in there. Some all inclusive, some that don't have stamping at all. Yeah, let's just pop him over there. Some don't have stamps at all. They are literally card kits. Um, I'm just going to cut this sentiment with a little bit of a, an angle on it. Like so. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, you can get some kits now. You can get ones that don't have any stamping whatsoever in them. So if you aren't confident stamper, you don't want to stamp, you don't want inks and all that, but you do want to make lovely cards, you can pop across to hullabaloo.com and have a look at what's available. There we go. Okay, move that out of the way. We can bring our pieces in. So we're going to start with the the lid and the base. I'm just going to work out which is which. That one looks like the the lid. Yeah, so that's the lid. So we'll start with the base. So we'll burnish these sides. Get that nice crust edge that we need for keeping our boxes shape. And this soft succulent, I believe, is my most favourite out of the new in colours. So for the box, just up the side of the square and take a couple of wedges out, one on each side. Do that on all four sides. So all four corners, sorry, up the square and wedge. And then the same on the opposite side four corners wedge and wedge four corners wedge and wedge and there we go that's the base done we then do the same with the lid itself 
so I keep jumping straight in with the scissors before I've even burnished. Let's get it burnished before I forget again. It's all done. There we go. And again, same again on this one. It's up that square wedge and wedge. A lovely simple box. This box focuses on that decoration. Um, you can make it as complicated or as simple as you like. I wanted to put turtles on mine. And that's what I would probably reach for most days. I need to explore some of the other things. You'll see on my um, blog over the last few weeks, I have explored quite a lot of the differing sweets that have been released um, in the new catalogue. I'm using Seal Plus to just put these tabs together. You can of course use something like Tombow. Tear and tape would also be a good alternative if you are not confident with tape runners. Um, and then I'm just going to pop this together so fold the tab bring the side to it and at the other side fold the tab bring the edges together and then the final corner at the same edges together and then we'll do the base in the same way we'll pop some adhesive in these corners like so there we go and then as the other fold the tab bring the sides together fold the tab bring the sides together and do that on all four there we go and then get them the right way around you should just be able to slot them into one another what, have I got that the right way no nope, I haven't there we go and then there we go perfect fit and then we can pop our bits on the top so we've got our piece of designer series paper and our other piece of design series paper. We've got then our back and our turtles. So we'll get these popped on now. Um, so we pop the two designer series papers on and then we add our ribbon. At the moment, I am not 100% whether I'll be using the shaded, not shaded spruce, sorry, ev evening evergreen. So we've got this chevron ribbon, which I could use. I did use that on the original box. Um, or I can go with the matching soft succulent and we can use the open weave ribbon. So there's the two ribbons we can choose from. Not 100% sure which I will use yet. We'll have a look in a moment. And we'll get this stuck on here. There we go. Lovely. So let's see what the open weave looks like. I don't know if that has the same oomph as the other. Or we can use the chevron. Mm, I think the chevron still does it for me. So we'll pop that one to one side. We'll get a piece of this and pop this round like so is that enough yep so then we'll we'll tie off a bow on the front here not so good at having bows tied when people <laughs> i know people are watching are on camera But 
that's not bad at all we can we can work with that there we go so let's get that trimmed off there we go budge that over to the to the side there right final piece we need to pop our turtles onto here so we've got our little guys and our sentiment so i'm going to use both sizes of dimensionals to do this so i've got I've got my big ones there and here are my little ones so on the back of the big turtle i'm just going to pop two dimensionals on the back of the littles um, i'm going to pop one each on there i'm going to pop a tiny one on the back of the hat like so and then i'm going to pop two tiny ones on the back of the sentiment well, in fact i'm going to put three i think just to make sure it's secure Oop, that one's stuck to my finger now. And there we go. So we'll get these backs off and we'll bring this together. So one, two, three. We'll pop this up at the top here. That's that one. And then we pop big turtle in the middle like so pop his little hat on and then pop these little guys next to him so what sleepy one goes behind him because <laughs> of course the sleepy one would be dawdling while the little happy one excitable one is jumping around in front on the back of this i'm just going to pop a couple more dimensionals i'm going to use some of this edging strip because it's brill and there's no need to waste it so we'll pop some of too much take a bit off we'll pop some of that there and then we'll pop some little bits across the center just to make sure it doesn't dip in the middle there we go take the backs off this and then we are good to go with our box and it's a, an amazing size so Bring it in. We'll get this. Move that both to the edge so I can get this in the centre. And about there. And there we go. So we've got the soft succulent version and the I can't even get them both on screen, they're that big, so Evening evergreen version, soft succulent version. Which do you think you prefer best? I think I prefer soft succulent, but only just. I love both colours. Okay, so as I've said throughout the video there, if you wish to purchase any of the materials that I've used to make these boxes, so the card, ink, stamps, ribbon, or any of the tools such as the trimmer and the um, bone folder, etc., pop over to hullabaloo.com and hit that shop button. Before you place an order, um, in the top right hand corner of my website there is a hostess code. Please don't forget to add that as you go to the checkout stage of the order. That will make sure you are entered into my hostess club and I will send you a little thank you gift as part of that. And I will see you next time. Be sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you again. Bye bye.